combative. Um, the, the first thing that comes up from many of the questions is uh, the idea of practice. There's a lot of questions re relate to that. How do you bring practice to kids? How do you... Um, uh, it, it comes through a lot of different ways. And um, you all have some sense of what practice is and you probably have different senses of what it is. <coughs> And I need to talk about practice in, in two different ways. Uh, my teacher talked about Zen as life, that the synonym for Zen was life. And this relates to some other questions, but uh, I took that serious. So for me, all of life is uh, what Zen is about. So for me the question was what's the practice for all of life? In <coughs> in 19, it was 1976 I was uh, I guess I was, oh, I had already had Dharma transmission. I had Dharma transmission in 76. And um, my, my commitment, my vision was that I would remain in the, make the uh, Zen Center of Los Angeles my main focus. I was working at the time at McDonald Douglas, so I had a number of lives. And um, <coughs> that I would stay there and work with their people that came, and I would help them achieve enlightenment. That was my uh, that's my thought. And then uh, one day I was driving. I was in a carpool. We were going to work. The Zen Center of Los Angeles was downtown L.A. Well, not downtown, but sort of known bullshit district. But anyway, it was somewhere. And uh, I worked for McDonnell Douglas in Huntington Beach in this space industry. That was about a 45 to an hour drive. And in the carpool, I had an experience of uh, hungry ghosts, hungry spirits. And the hungers were the need to be satisfied in different ways. Hungers for food, hungers for sex, hunger for money, hunger for power, hunger for enlightenment, hunger for tranquility, hunger for so many hungers. And um, wanting those hungers resolved, fed. And at the same time, I, uh, it I had the the, uh, the experience that they were all me. They were all aspects of me. And a vow came up to feed all of those hungers. That sort of came up, you know, just came up. And that led me to now say, I'm not going to stay just in the Zendo in the Zen Center of Los Angeles. That was still a place I was going to be. But my venue of practice was now the world and society. And so the question arose to me, what does that mean? How do you practice in the world of business? How do you practice in the world of social action? I refuse to say that the practice was only when I went into the Zendo or the Dharma Hall or the Zen Center of Los Angeles. I wanted to know how to practice in all of life. 
So the question for me, for example, of how do I bring practice to children is not how do I get children to sit still for an hour on a zafu or how to do liturgy, but now I, I, what, what is it that children want as their, as their upayo, as their, like what's the right expedient means to work with children and what's the practice for? For me, the practice, in one sense, was to to resolve all these hungers. But what that meant to me, that, that it was to realize and actualize the oneness of life, the interdependence of life. And it had nothing to do with religion, with, with uh, caste, with class. How do you do that? So, for me, if I'm working with children, what would I do to help a child realize the interconnectedness of life? What would I do to help a homeless person realize the interconnectedness of life? What do I do to help the member of the Sweetwater Zen Center to realize the interconnectedness of life? What do I do to help the CEO of Exxon to realize the oneness of life? So that became uh, my uh, uh, my interest, if you will. How do you develop these upayas in? in in the various aspects of society that I found myself in. And all I could do was take the ingredients I had and try to do something. The idea of whether it was good or bad didn't come up. That's a decision that people looking at what I did would say, ah, he's full of shit. Or, wow, that's... But those are just subjective things at one point or another. That's in the realm of judgment. What I was concerned with so what's the best that I could do now? And if I didn't, if and I'm also a subjective being, so if I didn't like what happened out of it, now it's the next moment. And now I say, oh, now I have new ingredients. And part of the new ingredients is what I just did and I didn't like it. So now what do I do? Never, I never went into the position of saying, oh, you screwed up. I didn't like what happened. So I'll do something different next time. The, the the idea of of the the good and the bad and the worthwhile and the not worthwhile those are all extra and got in the way got in the way because this is a new moment and all of that I had I have my thoughts oh I thought I didn't like that stuff or whatever so you know unless you're a, sort of a masochist or whatever you tend to not do the things you don't like you do new <laughs> things and and you keep changing. You keep transforming, you keep, and I'm not going to say you transform for the better, but you do transform. So the next moment, you're going to do something else with the stuff you have. And that's all I can see that you can do. Now, I do spend a lot of time trying to figure out what's different techniques for helping to do some things and, and to work with different kinds of groups and all. Um, so practice is a rather large thing to me. Now, one of the things I, I've reflected upon recently, <coughs> it's amazing, you know, I've been in, I've been in Zen o over 50 years now, about, about 53. And uh, just recently, it struck me, such an obvious thing that takes 53 years to strike, <laughs> but uh, it struck me that uh, we, we tend to talk about
prajna and karuna. I don't know, do you use the terms prajna and karuna? Wisdom and compassion in English. And there's a lot of emphasis on digging in to prajna, into the wisdom, and then out of that will come compassion. And in fact, we say compassion is the functioning of prajna. So those are sort of uh, two uh, main streams. What struck me recently is that most of the upayas, most of the expedient means, <laughs> the things that we tend to call practice, were developed by men. If women were the ones that had developed most of them, there'd be much more tools and expedient means around compassion than around wisdom. What I'm, for the last, I don't know how many years, have been pushing is socially engaged Buddhism as a way of realizing the interconnectedness of life and oneness of life. Not that you have to do something else to be able to do 